I welcome you here as we come to celebrate this Divine Mercy Sunday on the second Sunday of Easter. For any visitors among us, uh, we have a tradition here of quietly singing three Hail Marys uh, after the conclusion of our final hymn for the next to be called Home Among Us. Also, please note that we do not take up a collection during the Mass. There are boxes mounted on both side entrances and one in the center where you may leave donations for the regular collection. For everyone, please note that we have a second collection today for the Catholic Home Ministries Appeal. At the end of Mass, the ushers will put out a basket in the center and back and one up front where you may leave donations for the second collection for the Catholic Home Ministries Appeal. As today is Divine Mercy Sunday, please note that we will have a holy hour for Divine Mercy at 3 p.m. here at St. Mary's with Exposition of the Blessed Sacrament, we'll be praying the Divine Mercy Chaplet and the Rosary. Let us now take a moment in silence to prepare ourselves to celebrate this Mass that the Lord has given.
that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever. of the Apostles. Many signs and wonders were done among the people at the hands of the Apostles. They were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the others dared to join them, but the people esteemed them. Yet, more than ever, believers in the Lord, great numbers of men and women, were added to them. Thus, they even carried the sick out into the streets and laid them on cots and mats, so that when Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on one of them or the other. A large number of people from the towns in the vicinity of Jerusalem also gathered, bringing the sick and those disturbed by the clean spirits, and they were all cured. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Pastoral Psalms number 81, Let Us Rejoice.
he touched me with his right hand and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last, the one who lives. Once I was dead, but now I am alive forever and ever. I hold the keys to death and the netherworld. Write down, therefore, what you have seen and what is happening and what, and what will happen afterwards. The word of the Lord.
It is not always easy to follow the Lord. Sometimes it can lead us into difficult situations where we may be afraid. We see it in the Old Testament prophets, say, like it's Elijah. In 1 Kings 19, Elijah is afraid because Jezebel, the wife of King Ahab, is trying to have him killed. So he flees and hides in a cave. In his fear, God comes to him at the cave. Moving ahead in time, we have our gospel passage today. Jesus has been crucified, and the disciples are afraid the same thing could happen to them. So they are gathered behind locked doors. Knowing their fear, knowing their need for divine assurance, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. His coming to them was an act of his divine mercy, knowing their fears. When we hear of God's mercy, our minds might often turn to God's forgiveness. And certainly God's forgiveness is a central part of his mercy. It's something we need. With that in mind, we hear Jesus say to the disciples today, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven. Jesus, who has the power to forgive sins, shares that power with the disciples there in that room, as he shares it with priests today, so that we can confess our sins and experience God's forgiveness. But again, Jesus' mercy is more than just forgiveness. Thomas was not there when Jesus appeared to the disciples on the evening of the day of Jesus' resurrection. When the other disciples tell Thomas what has happened, he says, unless I see for myself, I will not believe. And for this, Thomas gets a bad reputation, known as Doubting Thomas. But think about it. In his shoes, would you have thought differently necessarily? Nobody had risen from the dead before. So this news of Jesus appearing might seem very strange to him. It doesn't make sense. Does Jesus reject Thomas for his disbelief? What happens? A week later, Jesus again comes to his disciples. This time, Thomas is there. Jesus comes in, and all the doors were locked. He comes in and says, Peace be with you. And then he turns and speaks directly to Thomas. See my hands, my feet, touch the marks. He does not reject Thomas because of his weak belief. In fact, he's concerned for Thomas. In his mercy, he wants to help Thomas believe. He says to him, Do not be unbelieving. But believe. Jesus wants to help all of us believe. What is Thomas' response? Seeing the risen Jesus for himself. My Lord and my God. Thomas now believes. Do we believe? It isn't always easy to believe. Even when we believe, coming here, we must have some faith. But sometimes we feel like our faith is weak. We try to turn to God. It takes time sometimes to build up our faith. Think of those disciples that back on the day of Jesus' resurrection, when Jesus came to them in the evening, they were gathered in a locked room for fear of the Jews. Now they've seen Jesus. Everything's fine, right? Well, look, it's a week later. They're gathered together. Where? Behind locked doors. They don't have perfect faith yet. They do have faith, and we ask God to help us have faith and to have a strong faith. Jesus will send the apostles out as the Father has sent him. They will go out and do many signs and wonders. What does they get them? We can look at the second reading for this. 
with John. Where is John as this reading takes place? He says he's on the island of Patmos. What is this island? It's a Roman penal colony. That's where John is in prison. Why? Because he has been proclaiming the word of God and teaching people about Jesus. He could feel great difficulty. But there God gives him this vision and tells him to write it down to share the vision with us. And there the Lord says to him, do not be afraid. God had come to Elijah in his fear. He came to the disciples in the locked room. He came to John. God is merciful, and he wants to share that mercy with all of us. He does offer it to us, showing us his mercy. You know, the apostles were sent out, and they did many signs and wonders. The no signs or wonders were great acts of mercy to those who received them, those who were healed of illnesses, those from whom David was driven out. But they also signs of God's divine mercy. The message of divine mercy came to, to, to St. Faustina in Poland in the 1930s. At that point, appearing to her in the visions, Jesus gave her the image of the divine mercy. His image, Jesus, the words, Jesus, I trust in you. The red beam coming out of signifying his blood, the white, the water that flowed from the side, and the cross. That's the divine image he gave her then and told her to have painted that we can all see this image. And he also gave her the Divine Mercy Chapel as well as the Divine Mercy Novena. They were new offerings. What was not new was the message of God's mercy. God has always been merciful to his people. I think of passages like Luke 6.36 be merciful just as your Father is merciful. God has always bestowed his mercy upon his people. Jesus shows us, Jesus does great acts of mercy. Perhaps the greatest single act he does is the crucifixion. Jesus giving his life on the cross so that our sins might be forgiven. But it is not the only act of mercy. That Jesus does for his people. We can think about how he feeds the multitudes and how he cures many people, doing corporal works of mercy, feeding the hungry, caring for the sick, as Jesus himself directs us to do in the corporal works of mercy that he gives in the latter part of the 25th chapter in Matthew's Gospel. Scripture also speaks of spiritual works of mercy. Like teaching those, teaching others about the faith and admonishing the sinner, not admonishing them to punish them, but admonishing them to help them become better people, to turn their hearts to God. God offers us His divine mercy. We need His mercy. We need His forgiveness, but we need His mercy in other ways. It's just like the disciples who were afraid, needing God to come to us. To strengthen us and our feelings. God does great acts of mercy for us because He loves us. His love for us is perfect. We receive His mercy. And we are called to share that mercy with other people. Not just to say, look what we've done, and say, I did this, or done. Show me your mercy to me. We do it out of the same thing that God does merciful acts for us. Out of love. Receiving God's mercy, may we in turn always love God and love our neighbor. I believe in one God.
Father, good and loving God, we entrust all our prayers to you. 
both your law and new word birth, that renewed by confession of, the, of your name by, and by baptism, that may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you.
brought from heaven to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostle St. Benedict and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit the co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever.